All right, we'll continue on with chapter 10. This is section 3, Operations with Radical Expressions. I realized in making the previous video that actually in the section on simplifying radical expressions, it required you to use some of the techniques that are officially taught in this video. Um, so they're being assigned together, but just bear that in mind that these two, uh, simplifying expressions and then operations with the radical expressions, really do go hand in hand. So there's no new vocabulary, but just quite a bit of problem solving tips and then examples. So the first is, if you want to add or subtract radical expressions, what do you do? Okay, so the trick here is that, just like with variables, you can only add or subtract like terms. So the part inside the radical, which is called the radicand, has to match exactly, then you can add or subtract the coefficients, just like with variables. So before we had like 3x plus 2x, the variable part here had to match exactly, and if it did, then what you actually added was the coefficients, and then you got 5x, and you left the variable part the same. It's going to be the same with the radicals. So you can have 3 times the square root of x plus, say, 8 times the square root of x. If the square root part here matches perfectly, then you just add it up. 3 plus 8 is 11 root x. Okay? So the radical part is just like a variable, a unique variable, and you can only combine like terms, and you combine them by adding or subtracting the coefficients. Another note, a lot of times you'll look at a problem and you'll think that the radical part is different. So for example, if I have root 2 plus root 8, at first you might say, well root 2 and root 8 are different numbers under the radical, and therefore they're not like terms and I cannot add them. Uh, however, you have to simplify the expression, the radical expression, before you try to add or subtract. And the reason is 8 can be broken into 4 times 2. Okay, and the square root of 4 and the square root of 2 uh, reduces to this first piece here, root 2, plus the square root of 4 is just 2, and then root 2 is left behind. That's the simplifying radicals. And now when you combine these together, you have 1 root 2 plus 2 root 2 for a grand total of 3 root 2. So it's important to simplify anything that can be simplified before you try to add or subtract. Okay, the other thing you can do is try to multiply or divide. The trick to multiplying and dividing, which I already talked about a little bit in the previous video, is when you're multiplying, keep the parts that start outside the radical outside, and the parts that start inside the radical inside. So you still multiply and divide as normal. Um, so you could write it like this. Um, a root b times c root d. The part that's outside the radical is a times c. So you put a times c, and then radical inside the radical is b times d, b times d, as a very abstract, just to show you what I mean. Um, same thing if it's division. And then here, you can start by multiplying uh, the stuff inside and the stuff inside and the stuff outside all together first, and then simplify at the very end. Or you can try to simplify each of these first, and then multiply them. And which one is better to do? really depends on what numbers you have. If they're easy to simplify, go ahead and simplify them first. If combining them first will make it easier to simplify, then maybe do that. Um, and then the last little note before the examples, there's a strong connection between fractional exponents and these square roots. So anytime you have a square root, it's the same as putting it to the one-half power. So if putting it to the one-half power and distributing it into a monomial helps um, you understand it more, then you can always think of it that way. Okay, let's do some examples. Okay, so here we go with some examples. Uh, the start off really easy, and then they're going to get harder. So the first one, 7 root 7 minus 2 root 7. Because the square root of 7 matches up, these are like terms, and I just go 7 minus 2, which is 5 root 7. Okay, uh, next one. These are all root 5s, so 6 minus 2 is 4, plus 8 is 12. So I have a grand total of 12 root 5. So the number in front, the coefficient, is how many you have, and then the square root part is like what it is, basically. So let's skip down to here. So at first you might look at this one and say, oh, I can't combine these, but 44 is the same as 4 times 11, right? So the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. The square root of 4 is just 2. So this equals 2 root 11 minus 1 root 11, and of course 2 minus 1, 2 of anything minus 1 of it is going to be 1. So the square root of 11 would be the final answer for that one. Let's go ahead and look at number 11. 
So 27 breaks down into 9 times 3. 48 breaks down into 16 times 3. And 12 breaks down into 4 times 3. So you can see these are all perfect squares. And they all are going to have a 3 left behind. So this is going to be, let's put the square root on each one so we remember here. Square root of 9 is 3 with the root 3 left behind. Square root of 16 is a 4 with the square root of 3 left behind. And square root of 4 is 2 with the square root of 3 left behind. So now they're all like terms. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2 more is 8, 9. So 9 root 3. So adding and subtracting, make sure that you've simplified any radicals that are not fully simplified by factoring out perfect squares and taking the square root. And then combine any terms that are left over that have the same piece. Okay, so here we're going to mix it up with some multiplication. Uh, first thing is you still have your division property. So you, if you have something outside of parentheses, you want to distribute it in no problems here. Okay, so first we can distribute square root of 2 times square root of 8 is the square root of 16. Keep the insides inside. They're both inside the radical, so we just multiply them together. Plus now 2 times 6 is the square root of 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay, square root of 16, that's just 4. Plus, now root 12. 12 can be broken down into 4 times 3. Square root of 4, square root of 3. Square root of 4 is just a 2. Square root of 3 we can't simplify, so we leave it as square root of 3. So there's our final answer. Okay, let's try one of these. That's foil. Um, <coughs> here we're going to go first, inners, outers, and last. We do notice, however, that this is uh, a, it's like a plus b and a minus b. So we know the middle terms are going to cancel out. So 4 times 4, 16. Then our inners and our outers cancel out. So that just leaves the last times last. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And we've got a positive times a negative, which is a negative. Remember that when you multiply a square root by itself, the square root cancels out, leaving behind just the number. So this is going to give us 13. OK, and our last example here. Here we do need to do the foil the whole thing. So 8 times 5 is going to be the square root of 40. Then 8 times 3 is going to be the square root of... Uh, 8 times 3 is what? 24. And then we can go here. 2 times 5 square root of 10. And 2 times 3 square root of 6. Okay, so now this 40, we can break it up into 4 times 10. 24, we can break it up into uh, 4 times 6. And this is going to be 2 root 10, because the square root of 4 is 2. And this is going to be 2 root 6. Now we're adding all these together. So I got a 2 root 10 here and a 1 root 10 here for a grand total of 3 root 10 plus here I've got a 2 root 6 and a root 6 so that's going to be 3 root 6 okay I could have also n if I would have noticed this square root of 8 is 4 times 2 so this part is 2 root 2 plus this root 2 right here that was my first term. So instead of foiling it out and, and getting four terms and then simplifying both of these, if I would have noticed, I could have simplified this first term here and then combined these two together for a grand total of 3 root 2 first from this first term and then distributed that in. And of course, I'll get the same answer as I got right here. So lots of distribution and lots of simplifying radicals by taking out the perfect squares. Um, that's really all there is to this section. Remember, add or subtract only if they're perfect matches. Um, and add or subtract the coefficients. Alright, that's it.